Now that we've explained weighted average cost of capital, I wanted to do a real-world example of how to determine the rate weighted average cost of capital of a real-world firm. So I'm using Amazon.com for example, and the first thing we need to do is find the tax rate. To find the tax rate, I went to the SEC filings and found their income before income taxes and the provision for income taxes for the past three years. It is probably a better idea to do it for the past five years because as you can see their tax strategies have changed over the years. But for simplicity's sake, we'll do the past three years. Now, to find the effective tax rate, you simply divide the provisions for income taxes by the earnings before taxes to get the effective tax rate. And then the annualized average is the three tax rates for these three years divided by three to get the average. Now we have to find their rate of debt or their cost of debt. To do so, you go on to Standard & Poor's Rating Agency. You can see that their local long-term debt is, has a rating of A. And then go to Yahoo Finance Composite Bond Rates. You can see the 20-year yield on corporate bonds is 4.72. So you add that in as our rate of debt. Now the next thing we need to do is find their total debt. And this is long-term liabilities plus total current liabilities. Simply add these two, again found on their SEC filings, and you get their total current debt. Now the return required by investors is probably the most difficult part of this equation to find. And I will do another video explaining several methods to find the R equity, including the capital asset pricing model, which may be the most commonly used method. And so for this example, let's just say you talk to your manager and they said it's 10%. Now to find the total equity of the firm, you have to find the stock price and the total number of outstanding shares. Now, it is important when finding the equity to use market values, not book values. Market values give you a more realistic expectation of investors' requirements rather than book values. So you can find that on Yahoo Finance, Google Finance, Bloomberg, anything like that. Now, to find the total equity, you simply times the stock price by the number of outstanding shares and you get the equity of the company. Now, the debt plus equity, just to make our calculations easier, simply in addition, and you add those two up. So now I will delete this and go over our weighted average cost of capital calculation. So it is 1 minus the tax rate times the cost of debt times the proportion of debt to equity. So that's total debt, sorry, proportion of debt to total value of firm, debt plus equity over value of the firm plus the return required by investors, the RE, times the amount of total equity divided by the total value of the firm. And so we find that the weighted average cost of capital for Amazon.com is pretty close to 9%. Now, if I was working for Amazon.com and I was proposing a new project, say their new tablet or something like that, the managers would add a risk premium 
to the weighted average cost of capital to find our hurdle rate. And this risk period premium will vary depending on their analyses. Well, let's say it's 3%. I'm proposing a fairly safe project. And we have our discount rate for NPV calculations of 12%. Therefore, any NPV calculations using this hurdle rate that return a positive value will increase the value of the firm. So that is our explanation of how to do a real-world example of weighted average cost of capital. And if you'd like to find out more on how to find the return on equity, please watch the next video. Thanks. Bye.